I think there's been a, a slightly deplorable tendency amongst Bach's biographers to paint Bach, the human being, in, in a very complementary light, to imply that great music requires a great man to, and a great human being and a great personality uh, to be behind it. Well, of course great music requires a, a creator, uh, but it doesn't have to be a paragon, he doesn't have to be a paragon of virtue, and Bach certainly wasn't. Uh, the more that one discovers about him, the, the more one discovers that he was a deeply flawed character, that even though we have very, very few family records uh, and letters to go on, there are incidents that keep cropping up in his life, uh, almost a repetitive um, uh, pattern of antagonistic behavior between him and authority, the authorities for whom he worked. He was very combative. He, he really took them on. But I think we can trace it back really to his, his earliest times. All right, he, he started off in a presumably very happy family situation with both parents living, um, but he didn't go to school very often. We have a lot of records of truancy. Now why, what, what was he, why was he not at school? That's one big question. Then comes the double shock of both parents dying before he's 10 and his upheaval rooted as he was in Eisenach, he's now uprooted and he goes to live with his elder brother Johann Christoph a few miles away in Ordruf and suddenly his grades shoot up. Um, a reaction to, the, to his orphanhood, who knows? But the more I've been able to delve into the circumstances and the context of his schooling, the worse it becomes. Uh, it looks as if the schools, both the first two schools that he was involved in, were prone to very modern sounding difficulties of um, you know, overcrowding in classrooms, shortage of textbooks, um, hooliganism in the classroom, lobbing of bricks through windows, chasing of the girls, coming to school with daggers and spears, um, and a good deal of unpleasant bullying and sadistic behavior. There was one particular uh, schoolmaster of um, uh, Bach's uh, when he was in Ordruf, and he was probably then only about 11 or 12, who was known as, as the, the, the bully and the sadist of the school. And eventually he got handed his cards and he left, but not before inflicting God knows what damage on his pupils. And this is a, this is a theme that goes all the way through Bach's schooling. And we can't say with assurance, well, he was damaged. But it does come out in certain ways. In, for example, in his very first uh, job, that was when he was uh, organist in Arnstadt, he gets into a quarrel with a bassoonist. He writes a piece of music with a rather difficult uh, couple of riffs for the bassoon, and the bassoonist obviously makes a complete mess of it. He can't handle it. So Bach swears at him and calls him something pretty rude, and the guy reacts by uh, setting upon him in the market square. He, he comes at him with a cudgel, and Bach draws his sword and defends himself. And there's tremendous fisticuffs, which is only broken up by the onlookers. And Bach goes off to his employers and says, what's all that? You know, you've got to protect me, and they don't. That leads to a a feeling of suspicion of authority that runs right the way through his life. And it comes up again and again and again. And that comes into the foreground uh, when he's working in Weimar for the two dukes, the Duke uh, Wilhelm Ernst and his uh, nephew, who share the, uh, the authority. And um, Bach is unhappy there. He feels he's been passed over for the succession to become Kapellmeister. He feels aggrieved, he looks for another job, he's appointed, and he doesn't get permission from the dukes to leave, so they throw him into prison. And for a month, he's disgraced and imprisoned. It doesn't happen again, as far as we know, but he's picking fights pretty much all the way through his life, and unnecessarily, uh, right towards the end of his life, when he's achieved the most extraordinary quality of, uh, of his output, uh, including, you know, the, the, the two passions, the art of fugue, the well-tempered clavier, all the Brandenburg concertos, this fantastic body of cantatas. 
he picks a fight which doesn't, isn't even on his patch. It's down the road where a headmaster um, of a school says there shouldn't be too much music in this, in, this, in this school of mine anymore. The emphasis should be on the academic curriculum. And Bach calls the headmaster, which in German is Rektor, he calls him Dreckohr, a, a pun, a very schoolboyish pun on, on words. And Dreckohr means dirty ear. Why, why did he get himself involved unnecessarily in all that? It's as though he couldn't resist it. So I think it would be a great mistake to try and align this concept of, of divine music and div a divine human being behind it. And in fact, I would say the opposite. The very fact that this music is so profound and so uplifting and that the man is clearly not a, 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 a saint makes it all the more interesting. It makes it much more human and much more approachable.